One of the things that uh, sometimes you have to do is to, out of uh, a bunch of pictures that the client sends us, we need to make sense of all of them in order to create something that we call the environmental map. So an environmental map is basically a texture that we can then map to a sphere that hopefully is going to be used in a bunch of shots and it's going to be just one texture that will serve the purpose of using say for example these images as a background with multiple cameras and we're just going to do this once so how can we do that that's what we're going to see and the final aspect of that map is going to be something like this so how can we out of all these pictures do something that can be then textured back to a sphere that will take in consideration the UVs of that sphere so we don't have any stretching and the image will behave basically the same as the actual images that were taken but we have an entire coverage of that environment. This is more a test that um, either supervisors or leads do but uh, anyone can benefit on, uh, on using or how to do these kind of things because there will be a time in which probably you're going to be requested to do so. So here I have a bunch of pictures and uh, all of them, I, I label them everything that is at the bottom, at the center and, and at the top of this environment and basically all of them are with different exposures and all that stuff that that was on purpose because this will highlight a bunch of problems that uh, hopefully we're gonna talk about them and as you can see this is uh, this was shot on what it seems to be a tripod and um, basically it's um, there's a certain angle in which this was taken from um, starting in one uh, end and finishing at the other so first thing to do, uh, of course, we need to undistort these images because we're going to play with the 3D space. I have the undistort here. And because we're also going to use the 3D space, we need to make sure that all these pictures will have a full alpha. Otherwise, we're going to have transparencies and you'll see why. So let's put this in with a full alpha like that. And then I'm going to copy all of these to all the other ones. OK, so now I have everything. Um, one thing that also helps, um, apart from labeling like this, is to pick one that will be your center. So now I'm going to pick that reference and I'm going to do one thing, which is uh, normally the camera in the um, Wrangler sheets, normally the camera is there, but sometimes it's not. And we can always go and look at the view, uh, at the metadata with the view metadata node to see what kind of information do we have here. So let's see and call for focal length and yes we have focal length and maybe aperture aperture of 22 um, I'm not too sure if this value is actually correct uh, so I'm gonna choose to ignore this value because the aperture is whatever film back of your camera is and uh, I know that for a fact that this number is wrong so we're just gonna follow the focal length and we know it's 34 so now what we're going to do is we're going to open the camera in Nuke and we're going to put the 34 there on the focal length, right? And now the first goal and main one to start with is to put this image in a card in such a way that once we have this in the 3D space, after the scan line render with this camera, the image that we're going to have, it's going to be exactly this one. Okay, so we're going to open a new card no special settings at all, it's just a blank card. And the first thing that we want to do is to link some of the values between the camera and the card. So there's a relationship always between them. So what we're going to do is we're going to link the focal length to the lens in focal here on the card. So we link it like that and then we're going to link the aperture too. But I chose to ignore the aperture because I thought that value was not realistic. Maybe it is, but in terms of film back, if you uh, choose a camera tracker here, and if you know the brand, the actual model of the camera, you can come here, and I know that for a fact this was shot on a Nikon, and uh, it's the, I don't have the camera, the one that was used in here but I'm gonna choose something very similar which is this one here so we have now the dimension of our film back and then we can put these values here so it, it was similar but we're gonna put exactly the same and now because they're linked this camera and this card they will have exactly the same focal length and lens in a horizontal aperture what this means is once you put this one here once you read this through a scanline render 
what you're going to have in the 3D space is this, which doesn't look like much. Uh, and once you see this after the scanline render, you have a black image. And the reason is, at the moment, both the camera and the actual card are in the center of our world. So we cannot see anything for this reason. So we need to give some some depth in this card in order for, it, for the camera to capture it. So because they're linked, we don't want to mess with the translation rotation in scale. We want to mess with the depth, but in the Z. And by doing so, you're going to see that the card, it's always in the frustrum of our camera. So no matter how far you put this, it will always be in the frustrum. And what this means is the image that you're going to have here, it's going to be exactly the same as your input. And now what we're going to do, the goal is, we need to take this card exactly the same and we need to put the same thing in one of the images that we know in the 3D space. It's going to be around here on the left. We're going to move that image with the transform geo. Remember that we're not changing any values on the TRS of the card in any card. Okay? So what we're going to do is, we're going to take the center of our world and the transform geo, in this case the pivot is of course at 0, 0, 0 and so is the card and we're going to rotate the card like that in order for us to have an overlap that makes sense now here we can take a look uh, and we can try to uh, roughly aim to the right position in, in any axis and uh, there will be probably cases in which we're going to have to move in more than just one axis but this, this will not give you enough precision so in order for you to have precision, we need to see this in a different kind of way. Not only because of that, but because of the actual map itself. So what we're going to do is, we're going to use this scanline render. And now you don't need to connect the camera, but you need to connect the scene, of course. Because now what we're going to see is everything through a spherical output. And this will give us, once we have this complete, this will become some sort of sphere because we're going to put a card here, another one here on the top, on the top. So if you have like, a, the, the more images we're going to have, the more uh, we're going to have the, the sphere filled with images. What this one is giving us is out of that sphere, we're going to have sort of a uh, UV kind of output. And this is going to be actually what we're going to then retexture back to a sphere and that sphere is going to be captured whatever it's inside that sphere with the camera that we're going to have because the purpose of having a an environmental map is we need to have a background that will fit or that will be used on a bunch of shots hopefully in the entire sequence and whatever camera we put it inside it will always capture the same thing that's the goal of an environmental map so an environmental map it's a let long map um, because it's a let long we need to reformat this to a let long image which is twice the width in comparison with the height uh, either you pick one from here 2k let long or you create another one so you see that this value here it's twice this one here that's what makes a, a let long and now we're going to put this as our format but you see that this image is really poor quality right so we can still maintain the relationship between the width and the height, but we need to ramp up this value quite a lot. And that's why a lot of these maps, it's like a 16K, 20K, 30K, because we need to have the, the maximum detail possible. So what we're going to do after this reformat is to drop another reformat. But in this case, we're, not, we're going to keep exactly what we have, but we're going to scale what we have already. So if we put this to two, we're going to have twice the resolution. If you put this to three, you can have three times the resolution. And we, the, the goal is you need to go up with this uh, number as long as you have an improvement of the image. So you do whatever you need to do, but you don't need to scale to the maximum while you're doing this stitching here. Okay, so you put something that makes a bit more sense and it's detailed enough for what you're about to do, but you don't need to go to 10 if, it, if it's not required. I'm going to choose three for now. Right? So now what we're going to do is like assembling a puzzle. We're going to have this card in every single image and we're going to use transform geos. We're going to try just to rotate and not translate or scale it. All right? Because let's not forget the assumption is these pictures were taken in a tripod. 
So in a tripod, you would shot your first image here, then you rotate it like that, always with the same pivot, and then you do the same like this, and then you do the same like that, and you do the same up and to the left in every single direction. So that's what we're going to mimic. We were trying to mimic how these pictures were taken in terms of direction, right? So I'm going to try now to um, identify features on the two images that we can match. So, okay, so in this case, this tree, okay, this tree and this tree is the same tree, and this trunk is the same. So I'm going to, normally what I do is I use the selection tool quite a lot, and this is one of the uses, it's just to mark something. So I'm going to mark more or less this spot here, so I can match it with the rotation when I'm rotating this one here. Just rotate this, so that feature there, will become, will be placed in that spot that I've marked with my selection tool, like that, okay, more or less like this, all right? So, of course we're gonna have problems like this, like seams, we're gonna ignore this for now, and it's natural that we're gonna have seams, because um, the angle is not exactly the same in all of the pictures, and the light conditions probably change as well and the maybe this was taken on a, a automatic uh, mode so all the exposure and all that stuff um, got changed um, anyway we're going to deal with this later but the first um, thing that we have to do now is to do exactly what i've just done for all of them so now that i have all of them done you can see that this is starting to become a sphere right in that sphere, the output of that sphere, UV-wise, or we can face it like that, again, it's exactly the same that we have in here in this spherical mode. So this is our output of out of this system here in our 3D space. In this one here, the result is going to be exactly what the camera is pointing at. If you have this imaginary sphere completely filled with pictures, we would have this completely filled as well. I've done this teaching, uh, visually speaking, kind of uh, in a hurry, uh, just to explain the technique itself. But uh, probably there are some, some of the tiles or some of the pictures that could have been uh, better lined up. So, um, sorry about that, but you know, this, this is just to explain the technique and it's, it's good for, for that purpose. Now, as I explained before, we have all these differences between the images in terms of exposure, colors, um, all of that stuff. So now we will have to identify one that we wanna um, pick as, as our reference, and then we're gonna match the others to that one um, best possible. And we're gonna do that on the actual images themselves with some grades. So if I enable all these grades, you'll see that this will be this will make more sense overall. It's not perfect, it's not meant to be perfect yet, but it makes more sense in comparison to what it was. And still we can see all the seams as well. Not great, but that's part of the process. So now what, what would be the goal? The goal is to use now this, let's call it UV map or texture, right? To then texture a, a, a sphere with it. So if I open a sphere, and then we're gonna map this directly to a sphere. And as a starting point, we're gonna use the same camera. I'm going to put this to default so it looks straight. And if I put now this on a scan line render, what we're going to see is the portion of that sphere in terms of what, what's the purpose is you're going to have just one of these that you're going to feed to your team and every single camera will be capturing whatever it's inside that and everyone is going to use the same background for all the shots. So we, we do this for an entire sequence, for example. In this case, these are pictures, but this could have been portions of actual footage that will even become even more realistic. Uh, in this case, it's pictures, but it's, it's exactly the same concept. Just to call, call your attention for something. When you're putting a texture directly into a geometry like this, Nuke textures this from the outside to the inside, which means that in order to have the correct orientation, after the spherical transform, you need to put a mirror to do it like this. So, what we have to do next, we have to take care of those seams. But for you to do that, that's when you need to put this to the full quality, because the actual format is going to change. We're going to do that, and the goal is to, with the, with the clone tool, we're going to take care of all these seams as much as we can. By the way, uh, the reason why we need an alpha is because if you don't have an alpha, you're going to have transparency 
here you see so we need to have this full alpha so we don't have transparencies like that at all that's the only reason so now that i did the paint to take care of the edges let's see what we have so again this was done quickly not aiming for perfection here just to give you the example uh, even though it was like done very quickly it's much better than what it was because we don't see like very uh, obvious seams as we had before so now we have this inside our sphere and then now we can capture anyway we hopefully we have enough images to with all the cameras that we have available to us for this sequence we have enough coverage so uh, all the cameras will capture uh, a portion of that you can then I'm, I'm mimicking this this camera is being animated and this is the result that i have everything is is stitched um, we can move any way we like again this was done quickly so i can see already there's a, a, a weird angle here so probably i would have to rotate this to the left a bit uh, this style here and these paint jobs are not very good but it's again it's about the technique it's all about the technique and this is how you do a environmental map. See you next week.